Welcome to the Canadian Business Quarterly Podcast, where we speak with Canada's most influential industry leaders on the business and economic development issues taking place across the country. You can stay up to date with all of our content, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Zortex Therapeutic CEO, Dr. Alan Davidoff. Dr. Davidoff holds a PhD in cardiovascular physiology and is an experienced executive, clinical scientist, and entrepreneur with diversified product development, clinical, and regulatory experience. His 17 years of biopharma includes increasing leadership roles in three pharmaceutical companies, including Cardiome, Stem Cell Therapeutics, and Zortex Therapeutics. His professional experience includes developing drugs in cardiovascular, neurological, and renal fields from concept to marketing applications and approval. Zortex Therapeutics is listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange as XRX, and Frankfurt Stock Exchange as ANU1, and on the OTCQB as XRTXF. Alan, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for the invitation and uh, pleased to be speaking to your audience today, Jesse. Thanks very much. So firstly, for our audience and listeners, could you further explain what Zortex Therapeutics does as a company? Yeah, I'd be pleased to. Uh, the company is really founded on the idea that you can take ideas that, that merit development, and especially in the case where there are unmet medical needs, develop them through the early stages, uh, all the way through the end of the first proof of concept studies in uh, individuals with a given disease. And at that point, you've added value to a program sufficient then licensing and uh, late stage development can commence. And so we really add value from an early idea through to the first, the end of the first clinical trials. Okay. And so what does that mean in practice? What problem is Zortex Therapeutics looking to solve? The company is really focused on developing kidney disease treatments. Uh, what we know from our understanding of progressing kidney disease due to diabetic nephropathy or polycystic kidney disease is those diseases start uh, because of the underlying cause. But as they progress, uh, xanthine oxidase, an enzyme that is used by the body to produce uric acid, becomes more active. That rise in uric acid then starts to feed back on the system and accelerate the progression of disease. There are very good clinical trials suggesting that if you lower uric acid in individuals with progressing kidney disease, you have the opportunity to slow or stop their progression, in some cases reverse that progression, and that means you can keep individuals off of dialysis. And dialysis, while it's life-saving, is also life-altering because it, it requires a lot of commitment in terms of family and friends and uh, others in support of your uh, kidney issues. Mm. Do you want to tell us how this is being done and a little bit about the science behind it? Yeah, you bet. Um, what, what we uh, were fortunate enough to uh, begin to understand in the mid 2000s and then uh, along with a number of discoveries was that uric acid was driving a number of health consequences. Uh, those include weight gain or obesity, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes, and then secondarily, the health consequences of diabetes. Along with those discoveries of this previously unknown role, there was an opportunity to start to begin to not only patent and expand that patent portfolio, but to test individual compounds like our lead program our lead compound, oxypurinol. What we have seen over the course of pharmacology and toxicology and human studies is that the drug is safe and effective, and that's been corroborated by FDA review, and now we're applying it into clinical trials. Our most recent stu study uh, meetings with the FDA have indicated that the program for oxypurinol and polycystic kidney disease is ready to go into phase three trials. And so we're working diligently on 
manufacturing drug producing the uh, regulatory filings that need to go in advance of starting a phase three trial and then we'll work towards initiating that initiating that in the future we also have noted from uh, the previous covid pandemic is that acute kidney injury is uh, associated with the worst outcome for individuals who have a COVID infection. Whenever you see acute kidney injury, one immediately begins to think that uh, certain players that have been identified in the past, like uric acid, can cause that acute kidney injury. And we're rapidly working with a number of groups from New York and Italy and Denver to develop that therapy quickly in a way to interfere with the acute kidney injury that's happening. And hopefully that means fewer symptoms, fewer side effects from COVID infection uh, and a shorter path to recovery. And certainly we hope that that would also prove out as uh, decreasing the rate of death due to this uh, terrible viral infection. So you've, you've done a good job of, of outlining the technology, <clears throat> excuse me. So, what is the opportunity for potential investors by looking into Zortex Therapeutics? Yeah, the, the, the investment opportunity really is, um, you know, if you do an accounting of what our company is, we're a company with two programs that are in late stage, ready for phase three clinical trials. There's a great unmet need both in polycystic kidney disease and in ADPKD. Uh, despite all of that progress, our market cap compared to comparable companies is reasonably low. We continue to work to add uh, progress in terms of our regulatory and clinical filings, and we are working towards setting up a clinical, phase three clinical trials in both of those programs. What that means is ongoing value creation should at some point see us move towards uh, the mean of valuations. And, and we expect that uh, for any investor, that's a fairly compelling case. Hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the board and management experience responsible for the company? Yeah, you bet. Our, our executive team is uh, composed of a number of individuals who have worked in drug development over the years and like myself, have worked in a, a variety of areas. Uh, those uh, executive members and directors have worked on every element of drug development from manufacturing to regulatory filings to clinical trials and, and all of the technical developments that are uh, included in that critical path of, of progress. We also have a large number of individuals who are currently consulting for for the company and that collective team is not only very experienced, but a majority of this team has also worked on the xanthine oxidase inhibitor class of drugs. That gives us a very special opportunity to not only understand the drugs and how they can be developed, but because of our experience developing these drugs in the past and reapplying them to these two uh, disease areas, polycystic kidney disease and COVID, we have a certain agility by understanding what the FDA requires, by understanding the critical steps needed to progress. And then there's a bit of a bonus in that, in that we have uh, been developing oxypurinol, which the FDA has said is reasonably uh, safe and effective for uh, a variety of uses. So a lot of experience of that ex executive team and then with respect to our uh, board of directors, we have individuals like uh, Mr. Bruce uh, Rollins, who's not only worked in pharma, but also worked on in the financial market space. Uh, Dr. Br or Bruce uh, Cousins, who was an executive with J&J &J for a number of years, and, and we're fortunate to have him on our board. And then others like Paul Van Dam, who's been a CFO and uh, leader at a number of bios, pharmaceutical companies, as well as others like Alan Williams, who are uh, well-versed in the retail markets uh, throughout Canada. Okay. Um, and so do you want to tell me uh, a little bit about how you feel that this is going to impact on your immediate, near-term, and longer-term goals within the business? Yeah, yeah, of course. The 
the immediate goal right now is to focus on manufacturing oxypurinol and develop formulations for oxypurinol. That allows us not only to expand our uh, patent portfolio and in terms of the time of coverage and the expanse of coverage, but it also is a step towards advancing our phase three clinical trials in both of these areas. Over over a little bit more expend, extended time, near term, we see advancing regulatory filings, initiating these, those phase three studies. And uh, we have had a number of uh, pharma companies from around the globe reach out to us. And we think that as uh, we take these early immediate steps, then we, we move quickly into the sit- setting where uh, there will be potential licensing discussions. That, of course, is is where the value creation comes into play and certainly uh, value creation translated is, is licensing deals and that, that means milestones and royalty payments and revenue from our efforts going forward. And longer term, uh, we seek partners in, the, in both of these areas to develop through the late stage clinical trials and through regulatory filings and marketing. Um, but we'll continue to progress uh, regardless of the timing of the entry of those licensing uh, parties. Okay. And, uh, you know, what lessons and insights do you bring from your own career to the rule? Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been involved in uh, life sciences and, and biopharmaceutical research for uh, probably 30 years, 17 years in industry. I think the uh, the lessons are are simple ones. Commit a hundred percent to what project you take on. Um, remain rigorous about what's needed to succeed and define that very early. But also look down the road uh, for risk and understand what's needed to risk mitigate. But in any case, remain rigorous about how you how you act with regards to those uh, two key characteristics of any successful program. And then finally, you know, I think uh, this, this applies to all of life, but certainly um, a global business like drug development requires you to build and maintain a network and constantly strive to, like a skier skiing downhill, to look 30 feet, 40 feet ahead and understand that uh, you need to prepare for, for what's coming up. So those are the lessons I take. Okay. And before we wrap up this conversation today, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, I I would like to emphasize the fact that uh, we have a strong experience development team. We're in advanced uh, late stage clinical programs. We believe that these are highly de risk because we're taking a drug that we know is eminently approvable and applying it to these new areas. That makes us late stage. It also means we've proven out a lot of the key risk steps uh, in the course of developing these drugs. And that should allow us very soon to change the way that kidney disease will be treated in the future with these first-in-class drugs. Excellent. Well, Alan, thanks very much for your time today. My pleasure, Jesse. Thank you so much. This has been a production of the Canadian Business Quarterly, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited. All rights reserved. You can stay up to date with the Canadian Business Quarterly, including our publications, newsletters, and podcasts by visiting www.thecbq.ca and clicking on subscribe.